Introducing the Walking on Clouds crochet mat. Now this one's special. Hi guys, Tiffany here, and I am so excited to share with you the Walking on Clouds crochet mat. This is everything that I would ever want for a crochet rug, crochet mat that lays on the floor that you walk on because it's squishy, it's plushy, it's so comfy. It is literally like walking on a big pillow. <laughs> And I really can't wait for you to make this and stand on it yourself and experience exactly what I'm talking about because it is amazing. Now the level of this crochet project is a, it's an intermediate level crochet project because we are working puff stitches and by working puff stitches, it instantly throws us in that intermediate category. And I really do agree with that because when I was working up this project for this video, I am not showing you how to make a puff stitch. I am showing you how we go about making the puff stitches in each space so that way you can get the rhythm of the pattern. So I do walk you through that, making the puff stitch as we're going. But if you've never made a puff stitch before, this video might go a little fast for you. So I highly recommend that if you've never made a puff stitch before, have no idea what a puff stitch is, to go research what that is and then come back to this video and be ready to go. All right. Also, if my video moves too fast for you, feel free to go to the settings, playback speed, and slow down my video so that way hopefully I am able to show you what to do in a way that is easiest for you to learn. All right, so the pattern for the Walking on Clouds crochet mat you can find on my website, crochetwithtiffany.com. Uh, I will have a link in both the description section and comment section below this video, so just click on that link grab the pattern, be ready to crochet with me. Now you don't need the pattern in order to make this project, just follow along with me in the video and you should have a very good idea on how to make the project. However, I will be including a diagram in the pattern that will take you all the way to the end of round nine where I stop. And that way if you need extra guidance, just need a little bit of extra like assistance getting from round to round, that diagram can be very, very helpful along with the pattern instructions. In this video, I only show you up to the point where you get a rhythm of the pattern and then I release you to finish off the rest of the project. Okay, when you are ready to go, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials I used to make the Walking on Clouds crochet mat. The materials that I use to make my Standing on Clouds crochet mat include t-shirt yarn, which I'm very excited to work with. This yarn is classified as a size seven jumbo weight yarn because the strip is consecutively one inch wide through the entire skein, which is awesome. I really love that consistency. I'm working with the Fox Yarn Company because they promised they had the least amount of joins, material joins in their skeins as possible. And I agree with that. I think I ran into two knots throughout this entire skein and each skein has approximately 140 yards of material, which is a lot. So that was a very pleasant experience. I was able to focus on the pattern and not so much running into a bunch of knots, which can be very annoying. I used the color Bone, and I used approximately two of these. So for my mat, I, have, I used approximately 240 yards of material. They did not provide me meters, grams, or ounces when it came to the material. So if you wanna to go to their website, foxyarn.com, you can try to find that information as best as you can, or just know I used two skeins to complete my mat. <laughs> All right, the crochet hook that I used was the N15 or the 10 millimeter crochet hook. Because we are working with a size seven jumbo weight material, you want to use a larger crochet hook. We want our stitches to be loose, plushy, fluffy. We want them to have this squish effect when we stand on them. That's what makes it so comfortable, like we're standing on a cloud. Uh, if you use a crochet hook any smaller than the 10 millimeter, your stitches will be tighter and you'll be losing a lot of that squishy plushiness and your stitches will end up being a lot harder and it'll stand or it'll feel more like you're standing on rocks than you're standing on a cloud. So if that's fine with you, then feel free, but I would recommend 
using at least the size 10 millimeter crochet hook. If you wanna go up, make your stitches even larger for even more squishy plushiness, feel free to do that. The yarn needle or tapestry needle that we are working with has a large eye so we can thread the material through the eye and weave in our ends. A pair of scissors. Optional is a measuring tape. So that way you can try to make sure that you are staying on track. It's awesome sometimes to just have on hand. And then also optional is fabric glue. And the only reason why I'm adding this to the mix here is because we're not working with yarn where we can weave in our ends through fibers we're working with t-shirt material. So we will be able to weave our end in going one direction, then doubling back, weaving it the other direction, but that doesn't mean that we're not gonna have this little flag hanging out of the stitch showing off, which can eventually come undone, potentially. So whenever I'm working with a jumbo yarn or a material that it's not necessarily yarn from fibers. I like to use the material glue to add just a small, small dot of glue at the very end of that strip, tuck it in, and then it just blends in and disappears and it doesn't go anywhere because it is permanent. It's machine safe. It's non-toxic. It's meant to be worked with and it's meant for people to enjoy the product afterward. So I'll have a link to everything you see here in the description section and the comment section below this video. So if you find anything that you really want to get your hands on, just click on that link, purchase the item and have it shipped directly to you. Otherwise, if you have stuff on hand or you know exactly what you want to go purchase, have fun grabbing that, then come back and we'll get started working on our Standing On Clouds crochet mat. All right, so we are going to begin with our yarn or t-shirt yarn and our crochet hook starting with a tail that's pretty significantly long that way we can really weave this in at the end of the project and then create our slip knot attach our crochet hook great we are ready to begin okay we will start by chaining eight one two and make these chains really loose we have some thick material we're working with here so one two three, seven, eight. Great, to close this ring, we're going to slip stitch into the very first stitch or very first chain that we made. Slip stitch to close that ring. Great. Moving on to round one. Round one, we're gonna start by chaining two. One, two. Now that chain two does actually count as the first stitch or first thing that we are doing with the first grouping. Okay, so we are going to yarn over, insert our crochet hook into that ring, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over, insert our ring again, two, yarn over, insert our ring again, three, great. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops on our crochet hook, then yarn over and pull through all seven loops on our crochet hook and that forms our first like grouping our puff stitch great then we chain two one two we're going to work a four strand puff stitch so we're going to yarn over insert our crochet hook into the circle so there's one then two yarn over three yarn over and four. We want to go through that circle four times. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine loops on our crochet hook. Yarn over and pull through. Awesome. Squish that over. Chain two. One and two. And repeat what we just did, inserting our crochet hook four times into that center. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. There's two, yarn over, insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. There's three that got pulled from the center, yarn over, and four, great. Then yarn over and pull through all nine loops on our crochet hook. 
and that is the puff stitch that we want. Then chain two. One, two. Repeat until you have a total of eight of these groupings, and I'll meet you after we finished making a total of eight. Okay, so now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight puffs. We are good to go. Awesome. Okay, so chain two, one, two, and slip stitch into the second chain that we started with to close round one. We are now ready for round two. We start round two by chaining two. One, two, great. Find the chain two section behind where we just chained two, so right here, and we're gonna be working in that space. We're going to yarn over, we're going to insert our crochet hook into that chain two space, yarn over, pull through, that's one, then yarn over, insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, there's two, then yarn over, insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, that's three, and then our chain two that we started with counts as one, so that's four. Yarn over, pull through all the loops on our crochet hook for our first puff, and then chain two. One, two. Now this round, we do do something different, so make sure you follow along with me the whole way, um, and don't just assume that we are making a puff stitch in every stitch space, okay? So chain two, find the next chain two space, which is right here, and we will make our four stitch puff. So yarn over, insert our crochet hook, Yarn over, pull through for one. Yarn over, insert crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through for two. Yarn over, insert crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through for three. Yarn over, insert crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through for four. Great, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine loops, loops on our crochet hook. Yarn over and pull through. Chain two. One, two, and again, having those loose stitches is good. We want that. Okay, once we have the two puff stitches, chain two, we will make a V stitch on top of the next puff stitch. So find the puff stitch you just made, find the next chain two space, between is the puff stitch that we wanna make a V stitch. We're gonna double crochet on top of that puff, Then we're gonna chain two, and then double crochet in the same stitch on top of that puff. And that's kind of our increase, how we're going to increase the stitch spaces as we go from round to round. So everything will lay flat. Then chain two. Again, between every stitch we're chaining two. Find that chain two space right here and make a puff stitch. One, two, three, four, yarn over, pull through. And again, if your material is twisting, let it twist, it's totally fine. It'll all look straight in the project. Then chain two, find the next chain two space, puff stitch, one, two, three, four, chain two, and every two stitches, puff stitches that you make, you'll do a V-stitch. So puff one, puff two, chain two, find the next chain two space, back up to the puff stitch right before the next chain two space, and we're gonna make our V-stitch on top of that puff. So double crochet, chain two, and double crochet. Again, loose stitches. Chain two. Find that next chain two space right after the V-stitch. They're right next to each other, don't skip it. Puff stitch. Two. Three. Four. Go, chain two, puff stitch, 
One, two, three, four. And again, elongating those stitches, even though it doesn't call for an elongated stitch, but elongating those stitches will really help to work with those stitches. Then chain two, one, two, just did two puff stitches, so that means I'm gonna make a V-stitch next, top of the next puff, double crochet. Chain two, double crochet. Great, chain two. Awesome. Okay, in that chain two section, puff. Just did two puffs, so that means I need to make a V-stitch, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and we've made it to the very end, so chain two, and slip stitch into that second chain of the chain two that we started with. Awesome, so now we have four sides. And that's the point of those V-stitches also is to help us to create a square instead of a circle, which will really help us out. Okay, let's move on to round three. Chain two, one, two. And you're gonna start to see a very common pattern here. We're gonna make our first puff stitch and the chain two space right behind where we made our chain two because that chain two counts as our first stitch, our first part of our puff stitch. We'll have one and then yarn over, insert, and that would be two, three, four. So we're really only pulling three strips from that chain two section. Yarn over, pull through, chain two, now we're going to repeat what we did for round two, but instead of every two puff stitches, it will be every three puff stitches. So we'll do puff one, puff two, puff three, find the V-stitch, and inside the V-stitch, we will make a V-stitch, and then continue on, okay? One, two, three, find the V-stitch. In the V-stitch, make a V-stitch. One, two, three puffs. Find the V-stitch, in the V-stitch, make a V-stitch. And then one, two, three puffs. And then I'll meet you in this fourth V-stitch to show you how we can close round three and get started on round four. Great, I made it to the end of round three. And honestly, so we want you to place your slip stitch to close the round in that second chain that you made of the chain two. But if you do find that that's a little challenging and you can't find that chain two, just find the space either here or here, working into that puff stitch somewhere. Just insert your crochet hook in there and slip stitch and it'll be fine. It really will. If you can find that chain two and slip stitch into the second chain, that is the most ideal. But if you can't, this works fine. All right, and then honestly, we are just going to go ahead and repeat round three over and over and over again until we reach the end of round nine, and then we run out of yarn. <laughs> we don't have quite enough yarn to finish round 10. I think we get halfway through round 10 and then we run out of yarn, but we do manage to make it through the end of round nine, and then we can cleanly tie that off and close off the project. But we will start every single round, guys, by chaining two, one, two. We will start by making our three inserts, so yarn over the chain two behind where we chained two. So one, two, three. Only three will go in there because the chain two counts as one. Then yarn over, pull through. Then we will chain two one, two, and then make our four. So yarn over, insert, one, two, three, four, and that is our, our puff that we're gonna be making. 
and then chain two. One, two. So what you will notice, every round is basically the same. We are going to be making a puff, then chaining two, and making every puff stitch in the chain two sections. We come to the corner where we find the V stitch here. In every V stitch, we make another V stitch with chain two before the double crochet, then one double crochet, chain two, one double crochet, chain two, just like we did here. Chain two, double, chain two, double, chain two. Inside that V stitch, right there. And then making puff stitches inside the chain twos. Every row or every round will grow one puff stitch per side. So if you'll see, we started with one, then two, then three. Round four will have four before you hit the first V stitch. Round five will have five puff stitches before you reach the first V stitch. Then round six, seven, eight, and nine, you know, and keep going. If you wanna keep going, keep going. But yes, every round will grow one puff stitch per round. So one, two, three, and then it'll be four. So I hope that helps to keep you on track. If you're going, 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 and then you're like, wait a second, what round am I on? Just count how many puffs are on one side and you'll, you'll be on track. Uh, and you really don't have to count so much other than making sure you hit four uh, pulls, four yarn pulls through each chain two space for your puff stitch. But you're gonna just kind of follow the pattern and be on track. So if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a second and finish this. But before I let you go, I used two skeins to complete my crochet mat. So let me show you how I joined the second skein, especially using t-shirt yarn. So that way I feel confident that when I reach the end of round nine, you will also reach the end of round nine and hopefully you don't have any questions. So if you get to the point where you are running out of your, your yarn, your material, your t-shirt yarn, and you need to attach more. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this right there and pretend that I'm running out of yarn. So I'll have the t-shirt yarn that is attached to my project and I'll have it go this way. I'm gonna show you how to do the invisible knot trick that I use on all of my projects. It is amazing and yes, it does even work for t-shirt yarn. Then I'll take my new skein of yarn and I'll have that new yarn go in the opposite direction. I'll bud those up next to each other. This side right here, take the two strings, take two fingers, wrap the two strings around my two fingers, Just two strings around my two fingers, take the small tail, go over those two strings, between my fingers, so the little tail is poking out towards my fingernails. Then I'll grab that little tiny tail, remove my fingers, and create a knot on that side. Then I'll follow those two strings to the other side, two fingers, wrap the two strings around my two fingers, grab that little tail, have the tail go over the two strings, between my fingers, so that way it's popping out towards my fingernail. Grab that little tail, remove my fingers, pull tight for another knot. Now you'll see two knots, a knot on this side and a knot on this side. Grab this yarn and this yarn, pull so that the two knots kind of slide in towards each other. And that forms a very strong knot. Take your scissors and actually cut right next to that knot. And you may notice that I think the company, Fox Yarns, uses invisible knots to join their yarn or their t-shirt material as well, because if you look at their joins, it looks very similar to the invisible knot. It does. And then you have your strong invisible knot that you don't have to come back and address at all, and you can continue the project as if there was nothing else to worry about. If you need to join more yarn, this is a fun trick that works great for me. If you have your own method that you like, feel free to use that. Otherwise, I will meet you at the end of round nine 
where we finish up and we're all done. <laughs> I'll show you how to weave in the ends, especially with t-shirt yarn, how it's a little bit different. But yeah, that's it. So go ahead and work away. I'm going to stop at round nine. If you want to keep going and just meet up with me when you're done, feel free to do that as well. Just finished round nine. We are now done with this particular crochet mat. And this is what it is looking like so far. I'm so incredibly excited with it. Again, if you wanna keep going and make your mat as big as you want, even turn this into a rug, have at it, feel free. I think it is luscious and squishy and plushy and just so yummy. I just love it. Okay, so when you are done and ready to tie off your work, we're going to grab our scissors. We're going to cut a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends. And with this particular yarn, feel free to overcompensate just a little bit. Yarn over the tail, pull the tail through the loop on your crochet hook, pull tight for a tie off. Now grab your yarn needle or tapestry needle with the really large eye. Weave your t-shirt yarn through the eye and then come to the back of the work. We're gonna weave in at the back of the work so as to hide our tails or our weave in as much as we possibly can. And I have that little curve with my yarn needle, tapestry needle. If you don't, that's totally fine. It's just a little helpful to pick up the strands. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to go ahead and weave through, do I wanna go yeah, I'll go ahead and just go along the top. You can choose to go to the next round of the bobbles and go more inner body of the work, but I'm just gonna go ahead and stick to the outside of the work and just kind of work that back loop of the chains. Just come round, back loop, come round, back loop. And then when I get about halfway through my tail, which is already twisting, I'm going to double back. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my work and still looking at the back, I'm gonna come back, I'm going to skip over where my yarn is coming out of, so that stitch, that way I don't go backwards and undo what I just did. And I'm gonna come through that same back loop that I went through before and just kind of hide it in there. And if you have a different way that you like to weave in your ends, feel free to do whatever works best for you. Okay, I'm gonna keep going till I get roughly back to where I started. Then I'm gonna stop I'm gonna go ahead and cut my tail, the remaining tail flush, leaving just a small little bit, if you see the small little bit for me. Now, if you, I'm going to be using the fabric glue, material glue to add just a dot and seal my, my tail down. But if you don't wanna do that, you wanna cut flush to where it wove in, you can do that as well. I just don't find that to be very trustworthy as to stay. It usually never stays for me when I do that. But if you're fine with that, go with your gut. So I'm gonna cut just shy of where it was woven in. So it's just a little itty bitty tail. Grab my material glue. There we go and I am going to come, I'm gonna flip it forward. Make sure I'm in view. So take my tail, flip it forward. Just smallest little drop. That was a little more than I wanted. It came out really fast. And then I'm going to stretch my stitches and lay it flat and just kind of hold it there. And it stays. And if you want to, now this stuff, this one is not the quick drying one, so it takes just a couple seconds to just hold it there, let it, let the fibers cling to each other, let it really stick. I also really like to use the quick dry fabric glue. That's usually my favorite. I just don't, I ran out 
I need to go to the store and buy more. I use it with a lot of these types of projects and it dries super fast, but, and then you're done. It's just, it's sealed, secured. It isn't going anywhere. Nothing will come undone. And again, it's safe, machine washable, and it stays and it's just awesome. So then the other end that we need to address is just this tail here. And we will weave this in the same way we wove in the other end. So I'm not gonna do that with you. You saw me do it once. You can either repeat that with this one or use your own way. But that is it. Now, the last thing I want to address before I let you go is you'll notice that, I don't know if you can see this, but my rug is curling on the ends here. And you may see this with your rug, your mat as well. It just, it's just because our stitches are fresh, they're new, and they're tight. As soon as these stitches relax, everything will lay flat. And a couple ways you can do that is you can just get it slightly damp, little bit wet and then they will relax the stitches will release or over time just give it give it some time keep laying on keep laying it on the floor keep stepping on it in certain places and the stitches will relax it's just because our stitches are fresh and new and tight that it's causing a little bit of curl but it's nothing to worry about don't think you're doing anything wrong you're not doing anything wrong it will, it will relax, the stitches will, and then everything will lay flat. They already are sort of as I'm pushing it down. <laughs> All right, that's it guys. I hope you love it. All right guys, what did you think of the Walking on Clouds crochet mat? I would love to hear your experience in the comment section below. Did you have fun? Did you have any questions? Please let me know, I would love to hear. Now you may have noticed when we finished round nine, there wasn't quite enough t-shirt yarn to finish round 10. I think we got to about round nine and a half when we ran out of material, or at least me, what I did. So I had to back it up to finish round nine where it was just a complete round. But I have a significant amount of t-shirt material left over. If you would like, you can always take this leftover material and make tassels to go in the corners one on each of the four corners, and I think that would be extra special and really cool. I have a video for making tassels. I'll click that, put that up in the card section above if you'd like to check that out. Uh, but otherwise, feel free to just maybe buy another skein and continue growing your mat or hang on to this for another project. <laughs> I really hope you liked this video and I hope you had fun. If you did, please push that thumbs up button. It's like a big high five and good feedback for me. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my upcoming videos. I have some amazing videos coming up, some holiday videos coming up, more giveaways, more things, so much fun and you're not gonna wanna miss out. If you'd like to support my channel or want a little bit more out of my channel, check out my membership program. I have a couple levels I think you'll really enjoy and I would love for you to join. If you had a lot of fun with this video, I have more just like it. Let's keep going. Check out these videos right here to watch or check out this video, which is a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you for so much for crocheting with me guys and I'll see you with the next one. Bye. <laughs>